After the fall of the non-avian dinosaurs caused by a giant asteroid, mammals made the Earth their own. And with their newfound rule, they quickly began to grow much larger than before, no longer restrained in stature by their previous rulers. And this tendency of becoming larger and larger only continued to increase for millions of years, until it reached its pinnacle about 34 million years ago when a titanic mammal emerged in Eurasia in the form of a hornless rhino. It was dubbed the Paraceratherium, and to many, it was considered the largest land mammal to ever exist. And since its existence, no land mammal has reached its size. However, this may not actually be the case, as in the 1800s a discovery was made in India that unveiled a prehistoric elephant that was so giant that it shook up our understanding of mammals, and is today considered to likely have been even larger than the Paraceratherium making it the current largest mammal to ever walk the earth. This was Paleoloxodon nematicus. As the name suggests, this elephant wasn't a genus, rather a species that belonged to a pre-existing genus, the Paleoloxodon. This was a group of elephants that are believed to have first evolved in Africa some 4 million years ago during the early Pliocene, with the oldest species being Paleoloxodon reci. This species, like the nematicus, was a giant, with a completed male specimen indicating a weight of over 12 tons, making it larger than any living species of elephant today. And things would only get crazier for this genus, as between 600 to 800,000 years ago, a population of Paleoloxodon reci migrated out of Africa and into Eurasia, where this migratory group would eventually become two new species. One was the Antiquus, an even larger elephant that tipped the scales at over 15 tons and was taller than nearly every theropod to ever exist. Ironically, many of this species would spread to islands throughout Europe, where its descendants would one day become the smallest known elephants of all time, a far cry from the enormity of the Antiquus. And yet, even this elephant was nothing compared to the second species that would arise from Reci, Paleoloxodon nematicus. The oldest specimen of this titan has been dated to over 700,000 years ago from the early Middle Pleistocene, and paleontologists were absolutely shocked by the sheer size of its fossils. They were especially fascinated by a femur that outsized that of a triceratops. And based on this bone alone, along with a right humerus, they estimated that this individual was 4.35 meters or 14.3 feet tall at the shoulders. However, the real kicker would come some years later, when an even more giant femur was located, about 20% larger than the previous one, and this time around, paleontologists estimated the nematicus was in a league of its own, with this larger specimen being between 5.2 meters or 7.1 feet tall at the shoulder, making it taller than most giraffes while weighing 22 tons in weight. At this size, it outclassed the Paraceratherium and holds the title of being the largest land mammal ever. Additionally, this absurd weight makes it heavier than not just the Spinosaurus, Giganotosaurus, or T. rex, but also every non-sauropod dinosaur to ever live. It was even heavier than some sauropods themselves. This size was truly impressive, and it begged the question of how large terrestrial mammals could really get. But there was a problem. Many paleontologists were skeptical of this estimate as the remains found were quite fragmented. And many believe that 22 tons is a possible exaggeration of the specimen's true size. This issue of fragmentation though also extends to the Paraceratherium and other contenders of the largest land mammal title, leading to much debate and argument in this topic. However, not all is lost for the nematicus, as in early 2023, a study mentioned a more complete specimen, known simply as C.F. Paleoloxodon nematicus, and it was noted as being between 18 to 19 tons in weight. The study also included the Paraceratherium, which was given a weight of 17 tons, leading to an increased consensus that the nematicus truly is the current largest land mammal known to science. It should also be noted that at this specimen's weight, the nematicus still retains the achievement of being larger than the dinosaurs mentioned previously. And to put its giant size into more perspective, at its revised weight, it is still 300 times heavier than the average human, and three times heavier than the average African bush elephant, the largest living land animal today. And the craziest part is that the nematicus possibly grew to sizes even larger than the maximum estimate of 22 tons. 
This is an idea that stems from modern day elephants, which can show huge variety in size, as demonstrated by the largest recorded bush elephant, which was around 11 tons, about double that of the normal individual. Unfortunately, exceptional bulls like this one are one in thousands or even millions, meaning it's unlikely a behemoth nematicus will be found anytime soon. Along with the current specimens, it would be greedy to complain for more, as their stature is truly shocking. And the nematicus wasn't simply big, it was also quite robust in the way it was built, with its skull in particular being exceptionally sturdy. Along with being dense, the skull was also uniquely shaped, a common trait in Paleoloxodon species, with a large crest being located at the top of the skull that anchored the elephant's splenius muscles, which were used to support its giant head. This was crucial for maneuvering its skull and wielding its formidable weapons, its tusks. Like many elephants, the nematicus had two forward-facing tusks, which are believed to have mostly resembled those seen in the Antica species, which usually grew with a very slight curve or were practically straight. And like all other Paleoloxodon species, it's also thought that the nematicus's tusks were proportionally long for its body. And considering it was a giant, it's generally believed to have had the longest tusks of any known animal. But thanks to its uniquely designed head, it would have had no problem wielding its huge weapons. And the stability of its skull granted it further aid by allowing it to move its head down low to the ground without it having to worry about becoming unbalanced. An important feature, as the nematicus is believed to have been a grazer, this assumption was based on the morphology of its teeth and implied that it ate low-level grasses. And considering that some modern-day elephants consume over 70,000 calories a day and can spend up to 16 hours a day eating, paleontologists think it's not a stretch to assume that the adult nematicus spent much of the day grazing the lands and would have ate over 150,000 calories, enough to feed more than 60 people. Spending most of the day feasting would have left the nematicus quite open to attacks from predators. However, thanks to its immense size and incredibly thick skin, full-grown adults would have been impervious to virtually all predators, which in its environment included felines, crocodilians, and wolves. Perhaps there was only one possible true threat to this goliath, humans. Coexistence between humans and the nematicus has been confirmed multiple times as certain formation sites have yielded both this elephant's bones and human ones. The question is actually mostly indirect, as it involves other Paleoloxodon species, namely the Antiquus, Reki, and the Naumani. These three species of Paleoloxodon were all found with clear evidence of being hunted and butchered by both early humans and modern humans suggesting that humans were quite adept at taking down extremely large megafauna. The Naumani in particular fascinated paleontologists as its direct descendants of a population of nematicus that successfully reached Japan via land bridge. However, these descendants were significantly smaller than their ancestor, being only half the size. Thus, the nematicus may have been exempt from takedown attempts. Although, if it was targeted by humans, it's been suggested that projectiles wished that modern elephants are highly intelligent. And thus, many paleontologists believe that the nematicus was also quite intelligent, which could have proved useful when defending itself from any threats, including humans. The theoretical intelligence of the nematicus would have also played a big role in its social life, as it is currently believed that all paleoloxodon species lived in complex herds which added yet another level of protection, especially for the smaller juveniles. This possible intelligence, along with its size and tusks, helped the nematicus become a truly successful creature, and fossil remains indicate that it was able to expand far and wide, with remains being found in multiple countries outside of India, including Malaysia, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam, and southern China. Although some of these remains, especially the ones in China, have been touted by some paleontologists as actually belonging to yet another species of Paleoloxodon. Nevertheless, it's clear that the largest land mammal ever was no joke, but unfortunately, as seen in many large animals, its size seems to not only been its main advantage, but also disadvantage. The nematicus is a recently lost animal, with research giving it an extinction date of between 40 and 50,000 years ago, with the consensus being that a cold trend in the climate led to a loss of its natural habitat of wooded areas, leading to a decrease in its main food items. And considering that this titan needed an extreme amount of calories to simply sustain itself, its population quickly declined after experiencing this habitat loss. 
Some paleontologists have also suggested that humans played a supporting role in its demise as well, citing that while there was a gap of 30,000 years between human arrival and its demise, there was a noticeable change in the population that corresponds nicely with the introduction of projectile weapons. Other large animals in its environment also became extinct around the same time, including the stegodon, a prehistoric hippo, and a zebra-like horse. Fortunately, unlike most extinct animals, we can still partially appreciate its glory today through its very close relative, the African bush elephant, and its even closer relative, the African forest elephant, which, interestingly enough, based upon a mitochondrial DNA analysis, has found to be closer in genetics to the Paleoloxodon genus than to the African bush elephant. So, almost like a cousin. And who knows, maybe this cousin may one day give way to yet another truly giant elephant. And hopefully, as more remains of this prehistoric Goliath are found, we can find out just how big it truly was.